When I was growing up, I always felt like I was different from my family. My name is Jenny, and my family has a long history of owning restaurants. My dad, Joe, is a big and loud man who runs our family restaurant very strictly. My mom, Linda, is always busy managing the staff. Then there's my older brother, Mike. He's seen as the perfect one to take over the business. I remember one night at dinner, the smell of dad's famous roast filled the air. Mom was excited about a new recipe they were trying. She asked me if I'd like it because it had a fancy herb I enjoyed. I mumbled my answer while picking at my food. Mike laughed and said who cares about herbs? The real excitement is the new grill Dad's getting for the restaurant. Dad nodded, looking at me, and asked when I'd start showing interest in the restaurant. I felt small and unsure, saying I liked being outside with plants and stuff. Mom and Dad didn't understand. They thought I needed a real job to fall back on. I always felt a knot in my stomach during these conversations. But there was one person who understood me, Grandma Rose. She lived in a small house with a beautiful garden. She was gentle and patient, unlike my parents. I often went to her house to escape the talk of the restaurant. One day, I found her in the garden, and she asked me to help plant tulips. I asked her why Mom and Dad didn't understand my love for plants. Grandma Rose looked at me with her wise eyes and said that my parents just wanted what's best for me. But they don't see the world like we do. There's magic in these plants in the earth. It's okay to be different. Grandma Rose's words resonated with me. Even as the pressure from my family grew, I clung to her wisdom. Mike, my brother, often teased me, calling me the gardener in a mocking way. His friends would laugh along. But I just brushed it off. They didn't understand the beauty I saw in every leaf, the peace in the morning dew. But I did, and when my hands were in the soil, I felt like I belonged. High school graduation felt like a crossroads. While my family buzzed with excitement over Mike joining Dad at the restaurant, I felt like a spectator in my own life. One evening, as we gathered in the living room, Dad talked enthusiastically about expanding the restaurant. He praised Mike for his upcoming role. Feeling invisible, I fiddled with a loose thread on the couch until Mom's sharp voice snapped me back. What about you, Jenny? Ready to step up? She asked suggesting I work at the restaurant. It was now or never. Actually, I'm not going to work at the restaurant. I'm going to study landscape design, I said barely above a whisper. The room fell silent. Dad's face turned red with anger. Landscape what now? He barked, dismissing it as no career for me. Mike sneered, suggesting I just plant flowers for a living. My cheeks burned with embarrassment, but I stood my ground. Yes, actually. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm good at it, and I love it, I declared. Mom looked confused and worried, urging me to be sensible. But I felt a surge of defiance. It's not just playing in the dirt, Mom. It's creating something beautiful, something real. I'm not asking for your approval. But I am telling you, this is my decision, I asserted firmly. Dad slammed his hand on the table, his voice booming with anger. If you choose this foolishness, you're on your own. Don't expect any help from us, he warned. I felt a knot in my stomach, but my voice remained steady. Fine, I'll do it on my own. Grandma Rose, who had been quietly knitting in the corner, finally spoke up. Her voice was calm but carried weight. Joe, let the girl follow her heart. She's got a gift, and it would be a sin to waste it, she said, her eyes fixed on Dad. Dad let out a frustrated grunt, turning away. Fine, do what you want, but don't come crying to us when it all falls apart, he muttered. As I turned to leave the room, my heart pounding, Mike called out after me with sarcasm. Good luck, gardener. Let's see how far those flowers get you. Stepping into college life felt like diving into deep water. It was thrilling yet daunting. I, Jenny, was far from the familiar paths of my family's expectations, ready to carve my own way in the world of landscape design. I still remember the buzz of the first day in class, the room swirling with the energy of eager students. I found a spot in the back, trying to shrink into the shadows. That's when Zoe, a girl with fire engine red hair and eyes full of mischief, dropped into the seat next to me. Hey there, newbie. I'm Zoe. 
a first-timer in landscape design. She introduced herself. I gave a shy nod. Yeah, I'm Ginny. It's all a bit overwhelming. So's laugh was loud and genuine. You'll fit right in. Wait till you get your hands into the real dirt. It's epic. What dragged you into this world? She asked. I hesitated. The memory of my family's disapproval still fresh. I've always loved plants, the outdoors. It's where I feel right, you know? Her grin widened. Perfect place for you then. Classes were a whirlwind of learning and creating. I absorbed things like a sponge, from the science of soils to the art of design. I was finally speaking a language I loved. After one particularly intense session, Mr. Davidson, our professor, a man as tall and sturdy as an oak, called me over. Jenny, your designs. There's something else. You've got a real knack for this, he said, his voice serious. Mr. Davidson's encouragement stunned me. Really? Thank you, Mr. Davidson. I'm just trying to do my best, I replied humbly. Leaning forward, his eyes piercing, he said. There's potential in you. Don't let it go to waste. Push harder. His words became my mantra. I moved into a studio, my designs becoming more ambitious, more expressive. It was exhausting but exhilarating. But even in those moments of joy, a part of me yearned for my family. Despite everything, one quiet evening, I gathered the courage to call home. The phone rang, each tone heavy with anticipation. Finally, Mom's sharp voice came through. What do you want, Jenny? Her tone stung, but I pushed on. I just wanted to check in, see how everyone is, I said. She snorted, her voice dripping with scorn. Oh, now you care. After running off to play in the dirt, abandoning your own family, clenching my teeth, I fought to keep my voice steady. I didn't abandon anyone, Mom. I just chose a different path. Her laugh was bitter. A dead-end path, you mean? Don't expect us to be here waiting when it all crumbles around you. The call ended soon after, leaving a sour taste in my mouth, but also fueling a fire in me. I dove back into my work with a new intensity determined to prove not just to my family, but to myself that I was on the right path. Life has a way of throwing curveballs, and mine came in the form of a phone call during my final year of college. It was Aunt Clara, my mom's sister, her voice shaky and strained. Jenny, it's about your grandma Rose. She, she passed away last night, Aunt Clara said, her voice cracking with emotion. I felt the ground slip away beneath me. Grandma Rose had been my rock, the one person who believed in my dreams. Losing her felt like losing a part of myself. The funeral was a somber affair. My family was there, all stiff and formal. Dad, Mom, and Mike looked like strangers to me. After the service, I overheard Mom talking to Aunt Clara. I still can't believe she left that house to Jenny. What's she going to do with it? She can barely take care of herself. Mom said, her voice dripping with disapproval. I felt a surge of anger, but I bit my tongue. I didn't want a confrontation, not there, not then. The will reading was a few days later. Grandma Rose had left me her house, the beautiful garden haven where I had spent countless hours. My family was shocked, their whispers sharp as thorns. Why would she leave it to Jenny? She's never around anyway, Mike muttered under his breath. Dad's face was like thunder. This is ridiculous. That house could have been sold, put money into the restaurant, he said angrily. I stood up, my voice steady but firm. Grandma knew I loved that house, that garden. It was where we spent so much time together. I'm going to keep it, just as she wanted. Mom's response was cold and harsh. So you're just going to live there alone? Playing in the dirt? What a waste. Their words stung. But I had made up my mind. I moved into Grandma's house, immersing myself in the garden she had loved so dearly. I started renovating the place, pouring my heart into every plant, every flower bed. As the months passed, I transformed Grandma's garden into something truly special. It became my sanctuary, a place where I could be myself, away from the judgment and expectations of my family. The day the invitation to Mike's wedding arrived at my doorstep was a day of mixed feelings. It was a fancy piece of paper, golden letters against a white background, representing a part of my life I had left behind, staring at it. 
I felt a storm of emotions churn inside me. I decided to go, but on my terms. I dressed in a way that felt true to me, elegant but simple, a far cry from the dirt-stained clothes I used to wear. As they entered the restaurant, the sights and sounds of my past life engulfed me. Spotting my family across the room, Mom, Dad, and Mike, all dressed up and looking like a picture-perfect family, I braced myself and walked over. Jenny, I didn't think you'd accept the invitation. Mom's voice was sharp, cutting through the noise. I came to see Mike get married. It's a family event, isn't it? I replied, trying to keep my voice level. Mike glanced at me, his smirk familiar and unwelcome. What's the matter? Ran out of bushes to trim. Decided to play dress up for a change. I felt a familiar sting, but I brushed it off. I'm just here to wish well, Mike. It was then that his bride, a tall woman with a haughty look, chimed in. Oh, this is the infamous gardener sister. Did you manage to scrub the dirt from under your nails, dear, or is it your natural look? Her words were sharp and mocking, hanging in the air. I clenched my jaw, refusing to let her see how deeply they cut. I clean up just fine, thanks for asking. Congratulations to you both. Dad's eyes were cold, his voice colder. Your being here doesn't erase the past, Jenny. You chose your path. Their words were like thorns, but I had grown a thick skin. I'm not here to rehash old arguments, just wanted to wish Mike a happy married life. I was quickly ushered to a small table in the corner, away from the family. Sitting there, I could feel the curious stares and hushed whispers. That's the gardener, they whispered, the black sheep of the family. But as I sat there, a sense of pride welled up in me. Yes, I was the gardener, the one who had dared to follow her own path. I was no longer the shy, unsure girl they remembered, but a woman who had found her strength, who had bloomed in spite of them. My discomfort only grew as the evening stretched on. Sipping my drink, I tried to make myself invisible, but that plan fell apart when I caught the eye of some guys I knew from childhood. Mike's friends, the same ones who used to join him in mocking me. Look who's here, the family's little dirt digger, one of them Jake, sneered as they approached. I took a deep breath, stealing myself. Actually, it's landscape designer, but I wouldn't expect you to understand the difference. Their laughter was harsh, grating. Oh, listen to her. Think she's all high and mighty now. Chris added with a scoff. I bit back a sharp retort, my hands clenching under the table. I've worked hard for my success. My job is more than just playing in the dirt. Their amusement was cut short when an elderly man at the next table interjected, his expression growing increasingly disapproving. I've seen this young lady's work, the new park downtown, that's hers. It's outstanding shows. The group was visibly taken aback, their smugness faltering. Muttering under their breath, they slunk away, their egos bruised. Emboldened, I decided to venture out from my safe corner mingling through the crowd, dodging glances and whispers. That's when I overheard Mike speaking to a group of his friends. She's always been the odd one, more into her plants than real work, Mike said, his voice laced with a mix of amusement and disdain. His friend laughed loudly. Every family's got its black sheep, huh? Their words were like a slap, raw and stinging. I walked away, my heart pounding, reminding myself that their opinions didn't define me. As I weaved through the crowd, I bumped into my cousin Lucy, a quiet presence in our loud family. Hey, Jenny, I've seen some of your designs. They're really something, she said, her voice sincere. I managed a small smile. Thanks, Lucy. It means a lot, especially today. Lucy looked at me, her eyes understanding. I never agreed with how they treated you. You're doing amazing things. I'm glad you stuck to your path. Her words were a small comfort amidst the thorns of the evening. We chatted briefly, a momentary respite from the tension. As Lucy drifted away, I returned to my corner, feeling the weight of the evening. The loud music, the clinking glasses, and the bursts of laughter around me felt like they were happening in a different world. I sat there, sipping my drink, longing for the celebration to end. The wedding night was winding down, its fancy aura overshadowed by my own tangled feelings. Just when I thought the night couldn't get any more surreal, 
the mayor, a distant relative of Mike's bride, took the stage for his speech. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a delight to be here, he began, his voice booming across the room. But tonight, I want to highlight a special guest among us, a true star in the world of landscape design, Jenny. Hearing my name, I almost choked on my drink. I stood up hesitantly, feeling like a deer caught in headlights. The mayor beamed at me. Jenny here is the brilliant mind behind the transformation of our city park. She's a celebrated landscape designer who's won multiple awards for her incredible work. Let's give her the recognition she deserves. The room erupted into applause, a sound that felt foreign to me. Glancing at my family's table, I saw their faces, a mix of shock and embarrassment. Mike's bride leaned towards him, her voice dripping with disbelief. Is he talking about your sister, the gardener? Mike mumbled something, looking like he wished the floor would swallow him up. The mayor's praise continued. Jenny's work has revitalized our city. She's a true talent. Amidst the clapping, I felt a surge of confidence. The mayor's words were like a light, dispelling the shadows of doubt and scorn from my family. Then, seizing the moment, I decided to speak up. Thank you, mayor, for your kind words. It's an honor to contribute to our city's beauty. I paused, my gaze sweeping over the crowd, settling on my family. It's funny, isn't it, how life turns out? Mike, you and your bride are perfect for each other. Your shared talent for rudeness to others is quite remarkable. The room went silent, the air thick with tension. My parents, my brother, and his fiancé blushed deep red, their shame as visible as if I'd slapped them. Mom's voice cut through the silence, sharp as a knife. Jenny, what are you saying? This is your brother's wedding. Mom interjected, her voice laced with concern. I met her gaze unflinching. Just speaking the truth, Mom, something our family seems to struggle with. Mike stood up, his face red with anger. You can't come here and talk to us like that. I held my ground, my voice steady. I've earned my right to speak, Mike. Maybe it's time you all listened. The confrontation ended with Mike sitting down defeated and the room slowly buzzing back to life. The mayor gave me a nod of respect before moving on. As I sat back down, the weight of the night lifted slightly. I had spoken my piece, stood up for myself in a way I never had before. I was no longer just the gardener or the outcast. I was Jenny, a recognized landscape designer, someone who had grown past her family's narrow expectations. After Mike's wedding, word got out about my success as a landscape designer. People were buzzing about the awards I'd won and the projects I'd aced. It felt like stepping into the sunlight after years in the shadows. And then my family came calling. One afternoon, while I was busy sketching out a new garden design, my phone rang. It was mom. Her voice had a sweetness to it that felt out of place. Jenny, darling, we've been hearing so much about your work. Your father and I are so proud of you, she said. I raised an eyebrow. Really? That's a change of tune. There was a pause on the line. Well, we were thinking maybe you could come over. We'd love to see you catch up on things. I could almost hear the gears turning in her head. Catch up or catch onto my bank account. I shot back. Mom's voice faltered. Jenny, that's not fair. We're family. The word family hit a nerve. Family like when you all but disown me for following my dreams. Seems like family matters when there's money in the picture. Before she could respond, I ended the call. I wasn't about to let them back into my life just because they smelled success. A few days later, there was a knock at my door. Mike was standing there, hands in his pockets, looking everywhere but at me. Hey, Jenny, can we talk? He mumbled. I crossed my arms. This should be good. What do you want, Mike? He shifted uncomfortably. Look, I know we haven't been great, but you're doing well, and I was wondering if you could, you know, help me out a bit. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Help you out? After years of calling me the gardener and laughing at my ambitions, Mike's face reddened. I didn't mean it like that. It's just that things are tough. I cut him off, saving Mike. I'm not your ATM. You and the family made it clear how you felt about me. You can't just waltz back into my life when it's convenient. 
After he left, I sat in my garden, surrounded by the beauty I had created. My phone rang a few more times over the next week. More attempts at reconciliation from my family, but I didn't answer. I was done with their fair-weather affection. I had built a life for myself, one that didn't need their validation or their greed. I was happy, successful, and free from the toxic ties that had once bound me. This wasn't just the end of a chapter. It was the beginning of a whole new book, my book, and I was going to make sure it was a bestseller, written on my own terms, in my own style. The new growth in my life was just starting, and I was ready for whatever came next.